So here we've got a really nice pasta dish for you. This is my ravioli of chalk stream trout, so really, really lovely trout. Um, and it's then blended down, and then we make a little mousse of that. So you've got the trout in there, you've got crayfish tails, and you've got fresh crab meat as well. And then I've got a bisque here, again, made from the bones. So this is a shellfish bisque, but we've flavoured it with some lovely lemongrass. And then you've got some Thai basil and shellfish oil to finish the dish off. So first of all, pan of simmering water here, not like rapidly boiling. Just get your ravioli, carefully place that into the water. And this is gonna cook away now for about seven to eight minutes, okay? So just keep, keep that cooking gently away. I've got a nice little uh, lifter just to take it out. And then when we come back, I'm gonna have a bit of melted butter in my pan. We're gonna transfer the ravioli into there, and then we're gonna plate it up with that nice frothy bisque. Okay, so ravioli's been in about eight minutes now. You see, I've just got a little butter in the pan. Just melt that down in the pan. Get it so it's nice and nut brown. And then turn the heat off. Add a tiny bit of water, and then, like so, you can just glaze up your ravioli. Right, let's have our bowl down, nice warm bowl. And then we've got our shellfish bisque here. I'm just going to get a little hand blender, a little hay mix. And then you see, just put your blender just at the edge give it a nice froth. Key to this, don't boil it. The moment it boils, it doesn't froth as well. Now you might say this is really, really chefy, but it makes a massive difference. You don't have to put lots of sauce on. That's why we do it, because then you've got a nice light sauce. Okay, tiny bit of molten salt, just to season that up. And then let's put that in the center of our heated bowl. Right, let's work quickly. Let's get our sauce. I'm gonna spoon this in, get a little bit of a froth and get some of the sauce underneath. Like so. As long as you don't boil it, this froth will sit around for a good amount of time. There we go. Almost done there. clean up of that bowl, all in the presentation. And then we'll go with some of our Thai basil. Just get some of that all the way around the dish. Lovely, lovely flavour. This just a bit different to the normal basil you get. So, like so. Then lastly, get your shellfish oil. This is all of the bones from the crab and the crayfish all roasted and then just literally carefully squeeze look at that that looks beautiful there we go keep your shelf sure for another dish and there you have it that's my lovely beautiful ravioli of crab chalk stream trout crayfish tails and lemongrass If you like slow cooked lamb, you're going to absolutely love this. This is my slow cooked shoulder of lamb here. We've boned it out, we've rolled it, it's got some rosemary in there, shallots. It's got a bit of red wine sauce in there already. So this is going to go into a pan of water, nice and simple. About 15 minutes, just simmering water, really slow simmering water. Then here, just to show you the garnishes, we've got some vegetables there. So we've got some baby carrots, little naves, radishes. We've got some spinach. Both of those put the lid back on loosely. Remember all of these containers, can go in the bin after or in the, research, in the compost, they're completely biodegradable. They're going to go in the oven for about six to eight minutes just to heat up. And then I've got roasted onion compote here. This is going to go onto the stove just to warm it up. And then we're going to put it on top of a lamb, red wine sauce, and your little herb crust just in between the paper there. So back in about 15 minutes, I'm going to show you finishing this off. So all ready to plate up my lamb here. Got a plate all warmed up. Then grab your lamb out of the water, drain it off carefully. And I've got my onions just warmed up in the pan. Right, carefully just undo the lamb. And then you wanna very, very carefully inch that out onto 
your tray and then just with a pair of tweezers or a little pair of scissors just get that clean film collar the reason why we send it like that is so it protects it during its delivery to you like so all right then we're going to get our onions and i want you to get a nice big spoon of that onion just put it into the center don't spread it out at the moment then take your herb crust here we go so this is breadcrumb based butter and a little herbs sit that just on the top use the paper to help you do that pat it down and then you see as if by magic it will just come off all nice there we go so let's get the paper out of the way pat it down a bit more just so it kind of encloses those that onion compote just underneath like that right then that's going under the grill there we go grab our veg out Here we go, so we've got our spinach and vegetables there. Keep an eye on that. You don't want to burn the crust. So there's our spinach, there's our vegetables. It's just starting to bubble there. Lamb sauce, it's all coming together. Grab a spoon, have a quick check on my lamb. Spin it around in the grill. You can put it in the oven if you like as well, but the best result is under the grill. Then spinach. Lovely little portion of buttered green spinach there. Let's put that in the centre of our plate. Again, let's get a bit of height going on. Like so. Then we're going to take our vegetables. Start to put those around. Keep an eye on them again. Yeah, it's all good. If you've got your sous chef in the kitchen, that's where you want to use them to keep an eye on the lamb for you as you plate it all up. So, carrots. Let's have a quick look at him. Looking good. Let's pull that lamb out. Sit on the board just whilst we finish this off. Smelling absolutely delicious. Keep putting those naves on. Little radishes. There we go. Right. Next up is our lamb. Now you want a nice spatula. Just go in there all the way underneath, like so give it a little drain off just before it goes on and then sit it on top of that spinach, pride of place, there we go, make sure that's not going to wobble off. Finally lamb sauce, just a little bit, you can always serve more on the table. Go. How about that? A little braised shoulder of lamb sent out for delivery. Tiniest bit of mold and salt just to finish on the top. Tell about you. Can't wait to get stuck in. Nice rich dessert for you now but with a little zippy finish. So you've got a uh, white chocolate, passion fruit and stem ginger cheesecake there. So stem ginger in the base and then there's a little passion fruit jelly just set on the top. All you want to do with this, little uh, chef's tip, just have a grill or if you've got a posh little bow torch, just basically flash it just under that heat and then you end up with a lovely mirror shine on the top there. So take your, this is passion fruit gel, I'm just going to cut off the end of the piping bag. I want to take my cheesecake, make sure you use a little spatula for that and then just carefully put that onto your dish like so, position that so you're all happy. Then we're going to take some of our passion fruit gel, get that just kind of like a piping bag, put your white chocolate aero, really really nice bubbly white chocolate three pieces of that, nice and generous. And then your passion fruit gel, just like so. That's nice and sharp. So it's really gonna cut through all of that white chocolate. And then we're gonna finish off 
with some fresh passion fruit seeds, nice little crunch. Just some of them um, dotted in between, like so. There you have it. That's my dessert of white chocolate passion fruit stem ginger cheesecake.